Do you think that you need a college degree in order to get a better job? The answer is probably not. Congress has determined that federal agencies, they cannot say that one applicant is more qualified than the other simply because they have a college degree. This new bill is focused on cybersecurity jobs in the government, but it'll probably expand to encompass all the jobs. So basically, many members of Congress were standing up and saying that just because someone doesn't have a degree or a certificate, that shouldn't disqualify them from competing with other people in the government. Now, what about all the people that spent tens of thousands of dollars and years attaining a degree? because everyone in their community, everyone in their family told them that was the only way. That was the path to success. And they listened to them and they went into deep debt in order to get that degree. What happens to them? This country has spent the last 60 to 70 years telling its young people that was the only way. That was the only way to unlock career success. So what has happened over that time? We went from 7% of the population having degrees, now it's at 50%. Now, if you're trying to hire for a job, you have 20 people lined up for an interview, you can assume that half of them, 10, have a college degree. And certain companies such as Sally Mae have been benefiting from that decision. This is starting with the cybersecurity jobs because honestly, the government is hurting trying to get cybersecurity analysts, cybersecurity professionals. It's not just the government though, pretty much everywhere, there's a shortage of cybersecurity, even in the private sector. Just last year, there were over a half a million cybersecurity jobs open in the US. This is nothing really new though, because for years there's been this emphasis, there's been this focus on skills-based hiring, not educational-based. But we still have job announcements listing bachelor's degrees. Take this for an example. There's an IT position in the Department of Transportation. And if you scroll all the way down, you can still see there's a mention of a bachelor's degree in computer science. But just how many government jobs actually require a bachelor's degree? Let's go back to usajobs.gov and type in college degree and run a search. It looks like there's over 6,000 jobs mentioning a college degree in the job announcement. Now, usually on a typical day on usajobs.gov, you'll find between 30 and 35,000 jobs that are open that you can apply to. So out of all of those jobs, 20% require college degrees. The other 80%, you do not need any type of college. But what about IT jobs? How many IT jobs mention a degree? Roughly 200 of the 700 IT specialist jobs have the word college degree in the job announcement. This number is only going to continue to drop down. But what about you? If you want to be a cybersecurity analyst, if you want to work in cybersecurity, what should you do right now? You should do two things. One is you should train. The other is you should practice. So when it comes to training, first I would start with YouTube. Go on YouTube, look at some of the videos, even consider getting a book, maybe an audio book, and start to learn some of the fundamentals. I would even go as far as signing up for a course. You can go to Coursera, you can go to edX, you can go to LinkedIn Learning. There's courses there. Sign up for a free trial, take some of the classes. Some of them are only two or three hours. After that, cancel the trial. That's how you're gonna establish the fundamentals of cybersecurity. Then at that point, the next step is to practice. And these are some of the skills you need to practice. Performing security audits, analyzing network traffic, securing information through encryption. And one of the places that you can practice is at tryhackme.com, where you can reinforce your skills and you can challenge yourself. What would really help is if you could volunteer. If you're currently at a job, see if you can volunteer and help out some of the folks at the IT department. Maybe talk to your supervisor, see if you can go on a small detail to assist them. If you're not working, you'd have to volunteer at your community or something like that where you can assist with computer related tasks. Now, if you're trying to get your first initial job, I would say even if you start out at the help desk, that's gonna benefit you because you're gonna be exposed to IT people and you're going to be using IT skills. So don't be too proud to accept one of these help desk positions. And here's another thing, when it comes to colleges and universities, I get the impression more and more that they're really just pushing people through to get their degree. And the way that I look at it a lot of the times is the college is like a business and the students, they're kind of like the clients. They're kind of like the customers. So you want to make the customers happy and they want to keep the money flowing. 
So in a lot of different degrees, in a lot of different states, they will make sure they push their students through through the finish line. This is even if the student or the customer is failing. If they're failing, they will force them to go through tutoring. They will force them to take the test a hundred times or whatever it takes for them to get their degree, for them to be happy customers. And it devalues everything. And the reason I'm saying this, I, I taught at a university. I was an instructor at a university. I have multiple degrees and I don't think it sends the same signal as it used to. Maybe 50 or 60 years ago, it sent a signal of quality, of work ethic, of determination. But now, I don't think it has that same thing. And it's not just with the colleges and universities, it's also with these high schools. And this is happening all across the country. In the military, I had kids coming from the state of Mississippi, the state of California, Iowa, and when they would arrive, at times I would have them write a paragraph, two paragraphs, simple basic concepts, write about why being on time is important. And they would write these words, one syllable words, words like was, and they would spell it incorrectly. Now you and I, we know that was is W-A-S, but they would spell it W-U-Z. That's not was. So it's not just a simple case of a misspelling once or twice. I'm talking about chronic misspelling all throughout paragraphs, all throughout pages. And it's clear to me that the teachers, the educators at that school, they were just pushing kids out. They didn't care. So in this circumstance, in this type of situation, the school is really a form of daycare where they're just watching the kids. It is truly no child left behind because every single one of those kids will be kicked out with their high school diploma. And there's an impression that this is benefiting kids. Like it's a good thing that people can just come out into the world with a high school diploma and a college degree, even though they don't necessarily know the work. They don't know how to write properly. They don't know how to read properly but we still feel like it's good to give them this degree. And it plays a part in devaluing the educational credentials that a lot of us aspire to attain. Okay, enough about that. If you're interested in a government job, maybe an administrative job lines up better with your experience. If you wanna know exactly how to get that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.